Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to share some things with you. I'm just doing some research on Google here. This is something that I really want to look into more. And I brought this up about Jason Cooley and the fact that he pretty much teaches apostolic succession. The same that the, the same stuff that the Catholic Church teaches, but um, a, but as a Baptist, okay? And so it's kind of a common thing, so I'm looking up on Google, I looked up Apostolic Succession Exposed, and there's some good stuff on that, exposing, you know, the Roman Catholic teaching of it, which is pretty much the same as, as Baptists would teach, little differences, but now I'm looking up Baptist Apostolic Succession. I'm just showing this because, you know, Google's such a good resource, but, I mean, there is a lot of false teaching out there, so you have to be cautious of what you, you know, what you read and everything, but if you want to learn stuff you got to do the research and you know I want to do the research the best that I can to help other people so they don't have to do the research but still everybody should be doing their own research anyways but there was a page that I was just on <clears throat> here it's the Baptist Church it's Doctrine of Successionism and I'll read a couple paragraphs off of this it, it, it talks about how you know it compares how Baptists and Catholics are pretty much hold to the same thing here it says, the basic error of Baptist here is the same as Catholicism, namely that Christ's authority was placed in the hands of the church. Christ has all authority, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and he never delegated any authority to any church. The apostles were sent and authorized to preach the gospel by the Holy Spirit. Some verses there for that. The apostles preached and wrote by inspiration as authorized by Christ. The authority of Christ resides in him, and his will is revealed in the New Testament. Until we learn that lesson, we will always ask, What does the church teach? The authority belongs to Christ. The church is subject to him. And the very idea of the necessity of a line of continuous churches from apostolic times is unnecessary. See, I agree with that. And, you know, I'm doing a lot more research on this. I'd like to do more studies on it, but... I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says that the church has to be this direct line of ordination. And something that I would ask Cooley to and people who teach this stuff that somebody has to be ordained for it to be official or, you know, if, if somebody's not ordained or if somebody's not baptized by an ordained minister, then it's not legit and all this stuff. I would just say, you know, is it possible for somebody to ordain a false convert? And I would think that, yeah, that is possible. Uh, and, you know, in the scriptures we see Paul talking about Demas. says, you know, my fellow laborer, Demas. And then later on he says, like, Demas has forsook me, you know, went back to the world or whatever. So we pretty much see that Demas was a false convert. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that Paul ordained him or anything, but he very likely could have. Uh, men are not infallible. Men are not perfect. So, yes, men could ordain false converts so what happens there well anyways I don't think that the Bible shows anywhere like I said that the church has to be the straight line of ordination the straight line of descent or anything like that to where you have to be a part of the official apostolic church or or you're not saved or, or you're not you're not doing the will of God or whatever um, some really interesting stuff though uh, but you know Anyways, I think that there is, you know, the the universal church in a u universal sense, you know, the body of Christ, which is everyone saved everywhere, you know. She says here, if I had a grain of corn properly preserved from 1960, would it not produce the same crop from which it came? Would I need seed from the crop of 1961, 1962, 1963, etc., since the word of God is the seed of the kingdom, Luke 8, 11, all I need for a true church in 1983 is a true seed authorized by Christ. If one plants the seed of the kingdom, the word of God, he gets the true product in 1983, the same as they did in the first century. Churches or the saved are the result of preaching the word, not of some official pronouncement or endorsement from a mother church. So, you know, there's just some interesting things too. You know, in the first century church and stuff, they had to be sent out to go spread the gospel. Men had to walk on their feet, you know, or ride donkeys, whatever they did, 
they had to travel and they had to preach the word for people to hear it. You know, and I think that the King James Bible has like a huge impact on the faith. I mean, obviously it does. But what happened when all of a sudden Bibles are being printed out and going everywhere? Okay, so now like instead of somebody having to go out and preach the word as they did in the first century, now like scripture is going everywhere because of the printing press and stuff like that. And now because the internet today even greater, you know, so there's not the necessity for, you know, I don't know people to go out like they did in the first century in the same way so there's just a lot to think about and consider here but anyways uh this true church theory you know that that the baptist church or any other church is the true apostolic church and you have to be a part of that to really be pleasing to god and everything that's all a bunch of nonsense and it's very dangerous actually because all these denominations claim to be the true church and, you know, even if history is on the side of, you know, Baptists, and Baptist is pretty broad. You got your independent fundamental Baptist, you got your Reformed Baptist, you know, Southern Baptist, all that. It's just a big mess. So I would just say to stay away from that whole church system. Don't get involved in that. It's nothing but bondage and false doctrine. But um, the doctrine of apostolic succession in Catholicism and in Baptist, Baptist churches or any other denomination, so-called churches, uh, it's pretty interesting, and that's something I'd like to look into more. I'd like to hear other people's thoughts on that, but um, like I said, I don't think that anywhere in the Bible says that God's purpose was to, you know, have some direct line of ordination. Like, the church is all who are saved, it's the body of Christ, that's Jesus' goal, is for people to get saved. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching and God bless.